going to share with you three key principles that you need to know when you're getting through your project manager accreditation assessment. Now, I'm talking about ICE assessment, and depending on where you are from, for example, you are from Hong Kong, you are from UK, the assessment format will be different, but the principles are the same. So let me share with you step one. Step one, identify keywords. Now, many of the times, the case scenario in front of you will contain a lot of information which you may be struggling with. Also, in reality, your client, your contractor may suddenly phone you up and tell you a long, 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 full, full scale, full blown story. And then you listen to them, you, you will struggle. Now, as a project manager, as a contract manager in particular, you need to develop the skills to identify the key issues. And from those key issues, identify the keywords. And from those keywords, you identify the key contract provisions, which brings me to step two. Step two, you go to the index section of NEC, look up your keyword, be as specific as possible, and identify the contract clause or clauses sometime. Now, we all know under NEC, we do not use cross-referencing unless you amend NEC. But I'm talking about the unamended version of NEC. We do not use cross-referencing. Referencing. But the way they do it is they put all those linkages of contract clauses into one section called index section. You just go to the index page and then look it up. So that's step two. Step three, of course, you go to the contract clause itself and apply that to the situation. Now it is easier said than done. Let me tell you, now one of the principles here on reading the contract is to read the contract from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, and, and definitely not to isolate a certain bullet point and explain that in your way. So that is one of the common mistakes many delegates will make. Now, let me explain this. Now, many of the times, a contract clause can be quite long. And then you will, you, you see some bullet points in there, you will jump right in, dive right in, and then just pick that, as, pick that certain bullet point and then say, bingo, I got the answer. Now, you need to read that in the light of the whole context of that contract clause, meaning you need to read it from top to bottom, from the first sentence to the last sentence. If you are using one contract clause, by the same token, you need to read that contract clause in totality of the whole contract. Say for example, say for example, clause 20.4, talking about in consultation with project manager, we're talking about the forecast of defined cost submitted by the contractor. It has to be submitted in consultation with the project manager. What does that mean? It has to be read in the light of the whole contract. And most of the time we will say, First of all, clause 10.2, this is on the top of the contract. You read that first. It says the parties need to act in the spirit of mutual trust and cooperation. And you interpret, so-called interpret that phrase in consultation with project manager in the light of this clause. Otherwise, it can mean different things. And therefore, this is important. Read the contract clause in context. Apply that clause into your situation. Now, what I'm going to do here is to show you one example dropped by me just this morning. It has nothing to do with the real assessment. I just drafted it. And just to illustrate to you those key points that I have just talked about. So let me share the screen in a minute. And then I hope everyone here will understand. So it takes a little bit of time. Bear with me. So this one. Okay, so in front of you on the screen is a case scenario. I will read that out and then I will explain. A large stadium project is procured by NEC for ECC option A, secondary option X1, X2, X5, X10, and resolving and avoiding disputes option W1. There is also a set clause amending clause 62.6, .6, changing the phrase, if the failure continues for a further two weeks, to if the failure continues for a further four weeks, the tender total of the prices is 1.4 million pounds. The contractor later realizes some prices of the roof steel works are still higher than the prices submitted in the activity schedule during tender. The contractor submits a revised program and activity schedule for acceptance. The total of the prices is now 1.5 million pounds. There are no compensation events during the period. So this is the case scenario, a lot of information. 
So how to identify the keywords? Now, when you listen to me, you 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 might think, oh, of course, of course, this is this is so basic. Well, basic things are difficult sometimes. So what are the keywords here? The trick here is to read the answers first. Stay focused. Otherwise, you will you will get you will be ca carried away by many of the information in there. Say, oh, set clauses, secondary options, dispute option, and all these four weeks, two weeks, all these. So, so don't 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 be carried away by all this information. The keyword here is obviously acceptance of activity schedule. Acceptance of activity schedule or something about accepted program. So these are the keywords that you will form in your mind before you even read the question. So if you are familiar with the contract is itself, you will go right into option A, activity schedule, the relevant clause, which is clause 55. If you are not familiar, step one, remember you go to index page, go to index, index page, should be on page 100 of the contract. So let's do that together and see if you can get the same. So page 100, you know the keyword is activity schedule, but more specifically is acceptance. Acceptance of activity schedule. Then you go to the column on the left-hand side, and it's right there staring at you. Acceptance, the first line is activity schedule. Now for this one, for this case, there is only two clauses which are relevant. So A, 55.3 and 4. And then you go right to clause 55.3 and 4 and have a look. Apply that clause to the situation here. What is the situation here? The situation is there is a change in the total of the prices without compensation event. Should the con project manager accept the activity schedule or not? So you sort of guess this, this type of information that you need. And then you read the question now. Regarding the activity schedule, what should the project manager do? Ah, as simple as that. So you read the contract clauses, you go to clause 55.4, and then you will hit that phrase. A reason for not accepting a revision of activity schedule is that there are three reasons. Let me go to the third reason. To the total of the prices is changed, which is the case here. And what does it say? It say a reason for not accepting, meaning you do not accept. If you say do not accept, which means on the screen here, the answer which says accept will be wrong. You don't even need to read that. So let me mark it up here. So that is how we do it. That is how we save time. Remaining two, either one or three. So let's read one or three, word by word. Number one, do not accept the activity schedule as the price for work done today. This change obviously wrong because this is not what the contract says. So this is wrong. So you know number three is, is correct. If you do not have time, just pack it, move on. You have no time. But just in case, just check. Do not accept the activity schedule as the total of the prices on the revised activity schedule is higher. Bingo. This is what the contract says. So you pack it, move on. No time, no time. You don't even need to read the other two answers. That is how we save time. So I hope this is helpful for you. Later on, I will make more videos like this. Uh, this has a new trial and the content. See if you like it. If you like it, you do not like it. Any suggestion, just put that in the comment sections. Uh, I will try more new content later on. Even for ICE Chartership Professional Review, I may try to help some of the graduates here, both in England, I mean UK and Hong Kong. Um, see you like it. Thank you very much, everyone.